is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 23rd, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Steve e. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be Pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. <clears throat> and let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. Well, go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, you got most of the U.S. indices trading the upside. The one that is not is the semis. are off about eight points, about a quarter percent. Dow's up 570, nearly 2 percent. S&P 57, one and a half percent, one percent for the NASDAQ 100, 124 points there. You've got uh, gold up five bucks. 1847 is the print. Silver is up uh, four cents, 21.72. Lights recruit is up a buck two. Trade at 113.23. Natural gas up about 48 pennies, trading out at 850, and the 30-year Treasury is back one and a half points, trading out at 14011. Lead to charge dollar wise the upside. Google, 40 bucks. John Deere's up 21 or nearly 7 percent. Asimov Holdings 20 bucks, nearly three and uh, seven tenths percent. Uh, VMware is up 19 bucks or 20 percent. Regenerin is up 19 bucks or about three percent. Amazon's a leader dollar wise the downside off 44 bucks and change. Broadcom is down 18 bucks. That's three and a half percent. Autodesk down 10 bucks or five percent. Lithium Motors down about 10 bucks or three and a half percent. Decker's Outdoor off eight bucks and change. She's off three percent. So we got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. And as we speak right now, no request. My email, nothing in the Tigers in. I believe the phone lines are open. Let's just go take a look at the general markets. Let's begin with the week of the four index ETFs out here, and that would be the NQ. So we give them a moment. We'll go take a look at our eight panel set of uh, charts out here. And we begin with the daily time frame. It's that daily time frame that we're focused in on. Now, we've only seen this is since April 5th. What is today? May 23rd. So for quite some time, we've only seen two days when there's been a close above the red oscillator and change line. Those two days being May 4th, that was a one-hit wonder, and the second time period was May 7th, another uh, 17th, another one-hit wonder. Price right now is dealing with that resistance level. The exact number on its oscillator and change line as we speak is about where we're printing, 11,949. Let's call it 11,950 out there, and we're trading at 11,968. Now, if price can't close above this level, then that's going to suggest to move up to the center of its bearish structured profile, and that'd be the 12,622 level. Don't know if we're there just yet. As we look at uh, other time frames out here, the two-hour time frame chart has a nice rosemintum indicator top. We know the price has been up at this level, uh, quite frankly, all of last week. And as it got up to this price point area at about the 12098 area, that's when we saw things fell. Now, the 120-minute time frame chart also back then, last week that is, had a bearish structured profile. And that help to understand why price did re uh, reject the uh, highs as it got up into that sell zone. 
Now, what we have is a bullish structured profile. So price should be able to make its way to the top of that level, which is 12.096. And if it can clear 12.096, certainly for two consecutive bars, you'll be looking at a run to the 12.546 level. That's courtesy of the two-hour time frame chart for the NQ. 60-minute, roads meant to indicator bottom, price is above resistance, the top of the profile. Resistance on the 30 is at 12.066. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. We won't mess with the other intraday charts out there. But in essence, for the NQ, it needs to close above that daily oscillator and change line. It's really been struggling to do that. So let's see how that plays out at the end of the day. We get different signals from different uh, indices out here or future contracts. Let's go take a look at the ES Mini. We're going to try to do that as soon as I actually type in the correct ES6-22. There we go. And make sure we're on the right chart. Yeah. So I'll take just a moment here for these charts to populate. It's 120 minute time frame. That's the ES Mini. Also formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price is trading above the top of the profile there. So the ES Mini is much stronger. Now, the daily time frame is slightly above. It's more than slightly above its oscillator and change line. It's within inside its bullish structured profile. That resistance level first is 39.89. That's likely where it's going to target. The high so far today, 39.79. But as long as price closes above 39.39, that's the red oscillator and change line, it does suggest that a fur further rally is likely. As I look for some kind of topping signals other than a 5-minute chart or a 10-minute chart or a 15-minute chart, which, by the way, a couple of those do have some topping signals, and they would suggest support at about 39.49, so that would be a level to watch out there. I don't have anything else to report. 60-minute uh, time frame chart, which also has a, a nice little Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, was a four River Morningstar pattern that confirmed there. Its resistance area is at 4011. That's the ES Mini. Let's go take a look at the Dow, see what it is doing out here, what kind of signals that it might be generating for us. In the case of the Dow, 120-minute time frame chart also, as soon as it populates here, forming a nice Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. We'll see that here momentarily. Price is above the top of its profile out there. That suggests a further rally. And a further rally on the two-hour chart, where could that take us to? We'd have to say back to its recent highs at about the 32,640-ish area out there. Now, before that can happen, the daily time frame is going to have to get up and over its red oscillator and change line. Well, as we speak right now, 1.13 in the afternoon, it is performing that task. The red oscillator and change line is at 31.701 or thereabouts. So if you get it close above that, the Dow should then target 32.012. And then above that, 32.875 is where it would set its sights. 15 minutes got a TD9 count. Price is back at support. 10 minute TD9 count. Support there would be 31.768. Let's finish this off here as we uh, will roll into our break. Let's go take a look at the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 being the strong of the four equity future contracts out here. And shortly, we'll see this is well above its red oscillator and change line. Closed above it on Friday. Closed above it on 30. On thir 30 or Thursday, whichever you prefer. And now what we have is a consolidation with inside its daily profile. Bullish and structure says that price should be able to make its way to 1824. I don't see any other real significant uh, 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 patterns in uh, the short term. 15 minutes running the resistance at a breakdown level makes sense. TD9 count top on the 10 minute basis, price is holding support. So it, if price does head lower, the next level of support to the downside about 1779.90 out here. But the Russell 2000 should be able to make its way up to the 1824 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right we'll be back in just a minute. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this 
combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the chart that's on the screen here, the top section, uh, the red line is showing you the number of individual equities with inside the NDX 100 that are trading below the bottom of their daily profile. You trade below support. In essence, we consider that to be bearish, directly speaking. The green line represents the number of instruments trading above the top of their profile. You close above the top of a profile, that would be resistance. It's presumed to be in breakout mode. So we can take both of those and then draw little lines out here to chart each of those on a, a daily basis. What we can see right now is at 119 in the afternoon is that the NASDAQ 100 still has its work cut out for it. And what I mean specifically by that, there are only 18 instruments inside the NASDAQ 100 trading above the top of the profile versus 28 below the bottom of the profile. So it has a bearish bias to it as we speak at the moment. That's the daily time frame. If we look at the S&P 500, we have something similar. The S&P 500 is 79 of the 500 or so constituents with inside it that are trading above uh, above the top of their profile, that was 79, versus 146 trading below. So both the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 still have got a battle ahead in order to, so it's not just about getting above those oscillator and change lines, although that would be a slight positive. It also needs to get to market breadth positive in order for any rally to have any kind of legs out there, counter trend or otherwise. Let's go to our first question. It's uh, from Inside the Den, and I believe it is a take a look at the individual sectors with inside the S&P 500. So let's start with the spies out here. And if we take a look at the SPY, what did the SPY do on Friday? What the SPY did on Friday was it tested and rejected from a price standpoint the swing point low from May the 12th. That swing point low was at 385.15, but the volume was very similar, maybe slightly higher. So since it was not on light volume, the SPY that is, odds favor that uh, the swing point gets tested. Now we close, you know, we traded inside the swing point, close inside it on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Tuesday of last week. We're still inside that swing point. So the more ideal setup for the SPY itself would be a retest of 385.15 
and done with lighter volume. If we take a look at the XLK, the number one sector with inside the S&P 500, Wednesday was a buy signal. Wednesday, Friday was a buy signal out there. I don't know where the Wednesday came from. But what price also has to do is break out of that swing point. That means a close above 133.40 in order to have clear sailing waters ahead. But you did get a test and rejection with lighter volume in the number one sector, the healthcare sector being number two. In the case of the healthcare sector, it tested and rejected its swing point. Now, its swing point is not May the 12th. Its swing point is the trading day of February 24th. Now, what price is doing as we speak right now, trading into resistance. So no breakout here, consolidated with inside its daily profile. If price can close above the top of its profile, and to give you that number, I've got to turn on a data box. Let me see if I can do that here quickly. Where is it? Data window. Pop up for me. There we go. So the top of that profile is at 130.86. In the case of the XLY, the XLY is trading below the swing point from uh, May the 12th out there. So it looks like that continues to want to move lower. The XLF, the financial sector on Friday, tested and rejected a swing point low at 32.41. Does it on lighter volume? Price written out is trading above the center of its bull structured prof profile. So on a further market rally, you should be able to see the XLF get up to the top of that profile level, and that's at 35.36. In the case of the communications sector, XLC, don't really have a test and rejection there. So uh, I'm not really sure what it wants to do right now. It's just consolidating with inside its daily profile. On Friday, the XLI closed below its swing point, but did so with lighter volume. Still, prices traded below the support level of its daily profile. The, in the uh, industrial sector not looking wonderful. The consumer staples area on Friday confirmed a buy the D point. It generated a bullish hammer candle. Uh, you're trading higher right now. Now, where is this headed to? Quite frankly, I would have to go take a look at the oscillator and change line. I don't have a chart to do that uh, up on my screen right now easily. But it should at least continue up to that level out there. And if you can clear that, it may take a run for the 77.69 area. Energy sector, just been kind of trading sideways uh, last week, this week, but it's bullish out there. If we look at the real estate sector, it tested and rejected its May 12th swing point, the top of the May 12th swing point on lighter volume. You're back above the center of its bullish structured profile. This should be able to run to 43.97. Utility sector has run into resistance. That's the top of its profile. That's at 72.75. And the, uh, cons uh, the Built the material sector, the XLB, also finding resistance at the top of its daily profile as well as a descending trend line. So how do you summarize the sectors for the S&P 500? you got to like what the XLK is signaling to you. But the real confirmation is can it get outside of that swing point? That means a close above 133.40. So, Mr. Bill, I hope that helps you out. I hope that gives you the information that you were looking for. But if not, please type uh, back in uh, on the screen, and I'll be happy to get that information. The next question, also coming from inside the Tiger's Den, was to uh, take a look at the euro out there. And the euro uh, was from CKP. So let's go ahead and switch our screens. If you give me a moment here. And... Let's begin with the monthly time frame chart. Let me expand the chart out here. So we've got seven trading days, not seven trading days. Did I delete that? Oh, you son of a gun, you. Ooh, Stevie. Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. What are you doing? I mean, that's like missing a 10-inch putt. I don't usually do. Let me see if this. No, that's the monthly. Golly. Okay. Give me a moment here because the monthly is really an important chart out here. So I've got to start that over. So let's get a chart here. You can see the other time frames, EUR, USD. Okay, we've got that. Pop it open, monthly time frame. Let's get this so that it defaults back to the monthly template out here. And I know I'm just talking to myself, but uh, that's life in Stevie land. Okay, so now we've got a monthly time frame chart here for the euro. And did, did Jordan Spieth? Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I think he, it was more than 10 inches that he missed out there. But... Uh, and and then the truth be told, yeah, I've missed a putt that uh, of that length too. So, uh, but here I don't like to do it during the show. Now, monthly time frame for the euro. Here's what I want to be able to share with you. This is in the bar following bar number nine of a TD nine count at a TD nine count breakout support level of 1.0494. So you're going to get a confirmed TD nine count pattern here. 
Um, got to get. Uh, sorry, sorry that the profile, those profile levels that are out there are not correct. I didn't mean to include that. So let me get that out here. And there we go. Now, what you can also see, a CKP, is see that green, red, squiggly line out here, the oscillator and change line. Notice how it changed colors. So this is a positive for the euro. And that is that price and that line should catch each other. That does not mean that the euro will trade all the way up to 112. But price should target that line over time out here. And a very key level of support has held. Uh, this uh, has paid attention to TD9 counts in the past. Uh, and it's also, neg and it's also uh, negated those. But uh, I've got three of the five have worked here. So we'll pay attention to the TD9 count bottom that is out there, especially with it back at a support level. Now... If the euro is bottom on a monthly basis, we should see some kind of bottom on a weekly basis. And even though I don't have the A to B equals CD pattern drawn in here, rest assured, it completed last week when it generated that bullish engulfing candle. And now CKP, the price is trading above. Don't know whether it will close above the oscillator change on a weekly time frame. But if it does, that suggests more rally. We'll finish looking at the euro when we get back from this break. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the euro. We've got the weekly chart up on our screen. It's got a confirmed buy the D point, a confirmed butterfly buy pattern out there. And price is trading above that red oscillator and change line. So it does suggest that it is attempting to rally. Now, back to the uh, monthly chart here for the euro. I want to make sure that I point this out to you. So the euro, uh, I need to pull this back a bit further. Give me a moment here to add some more data to it. So let's go back about 15,000 bars or so. And um, we'll pull this back. Because so we've got a bottom pattern out here, but if price 
closes below for any reason out here. I just want to take a look at this. This is the low of 2016, 2017. So low of 2017 is 1.034, January of 2017. When, when price does close below that, and it will, I think all we have going on here right now is just some, some type of counter trend move. But when price does close below that, if you look over to your left-hand side, there is no floor. There is no nothing until you, well, I mean, maybe you can make the case at about 92, but this would really suggest that price pulls all the way back to its 2,000 lows out there. And you could have pretty large A to B equals CD to downside. Now, that's not what we have right now. But uh, I, I want you to be aware of that because should you see a close below that, that's going to set a waterfall to the downside. Right now, what we should have going on is some type of bounce, some type of rally. Now, in the daily time frame, as we pull this back out here, the daily time frame also has a buy the D point pattern that was confirmed on Thursday of last week, on May 19th, when it generated a bull sash candle. Um, where is price targeting? The, the, the next level that I would say that price should, it should be able to make its way up to about the 109 level. That's a prior swing point for back on April the 21st. And then uh, that's an area of resistance from April the 14th. So that most likely is its price target area. As we look at the other intraday time period charts out here, we don't have any bottom signal with the exception of the two-hour time frame. So what you should expect or anticipate, and that's a TD9 count top on the two-hour time frame chart, is that we should not be surprised to see the euro pull back to retain test or test that oscillator and change line. Now, it's currently printed at 1.065, but that line might move higher as price moves sideways. But uh, expect or anticipate that price and that will test each other out there. So that's the full view of the euro. And overall, again, monthly and weekly and daily have bottom signals out here. Price should continue higher. We think this is nothing more than a counter trend move. If we get a close below one, uh, 113, I believe was the number out there, we're going to see the euro head, head all the way down to that 82 level. And if that unfolds here, you can expect that the U.S. stock markets are going to cruise higher and faster than you could possibly ever imagine. And I look forward to living through that time period out here. Just not sure whether it's this year when that is going to unfold as the signal on the euro is it's not ready to crater, at least not just yet. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the request on the euro. The next question coming in is to take a look at Walmart. So momentarily here, we'll get our Walmart charts up on our screen. Give me a moment. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It is right here. So now we take a look at Walmart. Uh, we've got uh, weekly time frame. I'm sorry, monthly time frame has a confirmed Roads momentum indicator top. You don't actually see this too often. I'll pull it over here. I can say I don't see it too often. And that is a yearly Roads momentum indicator top. Of course, the, the year is not over. But uh, Walmart did the same thing back in 2015 out there. Uh, that also created a TD9 count top. Uh, but uh, back uh, off of the yearly chart, let's go look at the week. So the monthly is suggesting, by the way, because price is trading below its uh, monthly profile, 111.80 is the next target level. I and mean, we'd say that's really the target level because the weekly time frame that has a TD9 count top last week just simply crushed its breakout level of 133.77. Its next breakout area is down at the 111.22. So we got 111.22 and 111.80 as a price target. However, before price gets down there, you should see a counter trend move. Why? Because you formed a TD9 count bottom last week. That confirmed on Thursday. It was tested and held on Friday. And now what price should do is go target that red oscillator and change line to the 134 and change level out there. So Walmart, longer term, intermediate term, looks like it wants lower price, 111-ish type area. Short term, meaning the daily charts, are suggesting we should expect and anticipate a bottom. No profile levels to assist us there with regard to Walmart. We have a request from SAT to take a look at uh, Snow, S-N-O-W, Snowflake, I believe, is what that is. So we'll get these charts here populated and see what they are suggesting to us. We're going to take a look at Snow as well as NVIDIA. Now, I know in NVIDIA's case, it's got a nice bottoming pattern for its daily time frame. Here on the weekly chart here for Snow, so on the monthly chart, not a ton of data out here, Sat. And so... Uh, other than being at its all-time lows, so to speak. But we'll really focus on the weekly chart, which two weeks ago confirmed a road's momentum indicator bottom. What price should do is go target that oscillator and change line, currently in the 173 level. Now, if price, for some reason, closes below the week from two weeks ago, the bottom of a hammer candle, that says we want lower price. That's at 126.01. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, 
Daily chart uh, has a road momentum indicator bottom. Price is held the uh, but what it's really also doing price wise that is consolidating with inside its daily profile. And that's between the range the upside at 162.74, the downside 132, 138.25. We're trading at 138.11, so it's trading just below the uh, bottom of that daily profile. Do I have anything else to really assist us here? Not a ton worthwhile to share with you, but the weekly says we should move higher, the daily says we should move higher, but if the uh, lows of uh, last week had taken out well, then that's an incorrect assumption and price will head lower. But right now, you, you just have a consolidation in the case of Snowflake with inside its daily profile. NVIDIA was the next request here from SAT, and uh, SAT P, I believe that might be, inside the Tiger's Den. So let's get these charts here to populate. But I, my, my recollection on NVIDIA is we have a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. Maybe it was a TD9 count bottom. I think it's Rhodes Mintum Indicator. Yeah, Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom out here. That was uh, confirmed with a Three River Morning Star. And now we just have a consolidation with inside its daily profile. Support now 160.50. Resistance at 189.50. The weekly time frame says, I don't know what bottom you guys are talking about out here because it doesn't show one, nor does the monthly chart out there. The monthly says, Steve-O. Tell everybody listening to TFNN that we want to head to 134.59 after forming a monthly TD9 count top. That is the breakout uh, support level. A to B equals CD to the downside in play for NVIDIA on the weekly basis. It has not completed that pattern. It continues to want to move lower. But the daily says not so fast. While it just does this little consolidation between 160.50 and 189.50 out there, intraday-wise, not a ton here to share with you, Sat. So I hope that helps you out with regard to your requests for Snowflake and for NVIDIA. And thanks for writing in. Um, no other requests that I see inside the Tiger's Den. Let's take a quick read on the right. Uh, uh, we, we, let's take a quick. Let's look at my email. I think I'm just as bad as uh, Joe B. out there, who says he wants to go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, uh, start a war with uh, China or something like that. Let's go take a look at Roku and Asan. R-O-K-U is a ticker symbol, but I know Roku also has at least a daily bottom pattern out here. So let's go take a look at it. R-O-K-U out here. And uh, the question goes like this. Uh, please take a look at Roku for short term. Took few shares trade this morning. Please suggest the trend and resistance. And please suggest entry levels for ASAN. So in the case of Roku, you got a nice weekly Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So you got you really have three bottoms out here. So I like the trade here, uh, Sat P, in uh, Roku. You've got a TD9 count bottom for the monthly time frame that should complete by next, uh, well, today's what the, Tuesday, by next Tuesday out there. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on the weekly time frame. Another bottom signal. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal on the daily time frame. Your issue is where the sellers are located, Sat. And the sellers are located where? Right at the top of that daily profile at $99.93. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 611, S&P 63, NASDAQ 100, 143. We're looking at Roku, which on a yearly basis looks just disgusting, right? Price is trading below the low of 2021. When you trade below the low of 2021, it doesn't get too much more bearish than that. However, that bearishness, as we were talking about prior to the break, you get a nice TD9 count bottom. That's going to form on the monthly time frame. That says that a bottom should form this month or next month. We think it is this month because the weekly chart has gone ahead and formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom. So I totally get the trade idea. Just to have a few shares out there. That's fine. If price does not on a daily basis hold this oscillator and change line, that's currently printing out here at... 87.99 or thereabouts if you get a close below that and you want to pick up a few more shares then do it at the price point of 78.66 trade at 90.38 now i don't have a signal right now to say that price is going to get back there i'm just saying if you see that unfold because uh well, actually the resistance level that roku got to was the center of its bearish structured profile. So the resistance is in the zone of 99.93 to 110.56. And if you get above that, then you're looking at a move to the 135 area. So I get the idea, absolutely, of taking a long position here. I mean, just confirm monthly, weekly, and daily out there. It's just that it's not able to overtake those sellers out there. So just keep that in mind. You also had a request out here, SAT, to take a look at ticker so ASAN. I don't know if that's the same one, SAT, that was inside the Tiger's Den or not. But if so, thanks. And thanks. We don't have a lot of questions that have come in. So I really do appreciate you taking the time to write in. It makes me uh, makes it a lot easier for me to do a show out here. Now, ASAN, that is actually, what's the name of the company out here? I'm going to tell you by looking at my other screen. Uh, ASAN is Asana, Inc. And in the case of Asana, Inc., it's got a TD Nike out monthly top, and it's trading below its breakout level on the monthly basis. So not so good. That was at 2541. It did form a weekly TD9 count, but with a hammer candle. And that says that that low out there, and that low, by the way, is at 1787. Sat, if price gets below that, you're 2098 right now. Don't just, just you know, you, you don't want to even try to take a position in ASAN. I'm not sure where it would head to because it would probably all of a sudden get back to below its all time low or its IPO low out here so uh you do have a weekly chart look at that oscillator and change line it's resistance out there so the monthly says mm, don't bottom the weekly says yeah, maybe uh, well it's got a td9 count bottom the daily time frame as we open up this chart out here i don't have anything other than price just finding support at the bottom of that profile at 1913 out there so if you're asking me which are the which of these two has the better chart patterns to risk some capital in 
you'd have to go with Roku versus ASAN. And ASAN also on the weekly, ba- on the yearly basis, again, looks just simply horrible out here. So, Sat P, you're definitely doing some bottoming fishing out here in a market that hasn't really proven itself to say to you and I that it's formed some type of significant bottom out here. Maybe a buyable, bounceable bottom. But significant bottom, yeah, that's not exactly its message, at least as we speak right now at 1.45 in the afternoon. We've got a request here from uh, Frank Trades, Massachusetts, I believe, and that is for SLVO. So let's go see what SLVO pops up on our screen out here. I don't know what SLVO is, but we'll find out. I believe that is Credit Suisse, NASA Tracker, Zero, something or other out there. And this is a perfect example of why you and I can be agnostic as to what symbol we put up here on Stevie's eight panel charts. And it doesn't matter. The patterns are the patterns. They work for all time frames. They work for every instrument out here. And when it comes to SLVO out here, uh, you do not have any kind of a bottoming pattern or signal. Now, if you got a bullish reversal candle, you would confirm a road's momentum indicator bottom. The weekly chart has no bottom signal out here. Uh, you, if you were to get a bullish reversal candle, again, the same thing, you'd have a road's momentum indicator bottom. So both the weekly and monthly charts are saying, I want lower price. However, the daily has stepped up and said, uh-uh, not so fast. I still would like to take some type of counter trend move out there. And the reason is because it has a nice TD9 count bottom. Price is above that red oscillator and change line. So those are two of the setups to suggest you could get a further rally. But price is just consolidating or trading with inside its daily profile. So your resistance zone out here, Frank Trades, Massachusetts, is 434 support. And resistance is 466. And above 466, you then get resistance at $4.82. So you do have a daily bottom, but be careful. The weekly and monthly are not so sure what the daily is trying to do out there. Intraday wise, not a lot to help us out with SLVO. So thank you for taking the time to write in. I hope that helps you out with regard to that trade and have a, a magnificent Monday. Just checking the emails here, see if there's any other requests. And the answer is no. I don't see anything else out there. So what do we want to do from here with no requests? Well, let's do this here. Let me let's go to some of the usual suspects out there. Of course, if there's something you're like, well, wait a minute here, I might have a request inside the Tiger's Den. Give me a moment. Hey, Steve, if you have time, would you look at Amazon? So there we go. We do have a request, AMZN. This request is coming from G Motion out here. So let's go see what uh, Amazon is doing. I believe Amazon has got a TD9 count bottom, my recollection on the daily time frame. Um, uh, let's just make sure out here. Come on, come on. Yeah, so there's a nice TD9 count bottom. This formed here on May the 12th. Price is trading back into that swing point as we speak right now. Off screen, I will take a look at what today's volume matrix looks like. And so you're pulling back today. You got 3.6 million shares. That swing point for May the 12th out there had volume of 6.6. .6. So you're pulling back with kind of lightish type volume out here. You've already got a confirmed bottom there. On a weekly time frame, you have a confirmed by the D point. We'll open up the chart, and that was a bullish hammer candle from two weeks ago that confirmed that pattern. So about a 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, of course, if price were to close below that hammer candle, and that is at 2048.11, that says sayonara, Hasta la vista, and we'll see you at about the 1812 level. That's the next breakout level for the weekly time frame. Breakout level for the monthly time frame is 1626. So, folks, both of those levels are definitely in play. They're just not in play as we speak this moment because of the bottoming pattern on the daily time frame. So what price should be able to do is make its way up to the 2331 level. That's the top of his profile. We just have a good old-fashioned consolidation between support and resistance out there. So G Motion. I hope that helps you out, and thanks so much for your request. Uh, is there another request out there? And it is. It's from uh, G-Man, different from G-Motion out here. And uh, we've also got a request to take a look at Tesla. So first come, first serve, T-S-L-A is the uh, ticker symbol. We'll be able to get to both of these here. So when we take a look at Tesla, now I don't recall seeing a bottom pattern on Tesla. Uh, earlier today when I was checking out virtually every stock inside the uh, – well, all the top stocks inside the NASDAQ 100, but many, many other stocks out there. Let's see if Stevie's recollection is correct. Yes, it is. Daily time frame. No, but, well, I take that back. You do have wave number seven. 
I do have wave number seven on the daily time frame out there. So you got the potential for a bottom that could confirm today as long as price does not take out Friday's low. Friday's low, by the way, was 633. We have not taken out. So you could get a seventh wave move confirmation today. And that would take price up to about the 722 level. The weekly chart says, OK, I could buy that because price is just simply pulled back to its break level of 67724. But you reach that level, that means it closed below it. It says, I want lower price. 616.63 would be its last bastion of hope, the bottom of its monthly bullish structure profile. So we take a look at Tesla out here. We don't really have a bottom signal. The intraday charts say it's attempting to form a bottom. You need to see that confirmation of the daily time frame. You're right. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at uh, Zim Integrated Shipping Services, ZIM, is the uh, ticker symbol. And on a monthly basis, this uh, formed a TD9 count top. And on a weekly basis, formed a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. The weekly chart, price pulled right back to its breakout level of support of 49.22. Very key level out there. No one within inside TFNN, including myself, would have chosen 49.22 as the breakout level. So it's nice to have an objective, not subjective, tool 
to help us. So that was the bottom. And right now, price is trading above the top of its profile weekly, that is, 65.42. And you can see it is taking on its green oscillator and change line. And the close above both of those at the end of the week is going to suggest that price is going to go make a run for its most recent high in the $90 area. Now, before it gets up to $90 on a daily basis, this forms a road momentum indicator bottom. And the next level of resistance is going to be 73.23. I say next level because you're above the top of its daily profile, which is 65.93. So as we look at the charts here for Zim, you've got a couple of intraday charts, a 90-minute, I'm sorry, 30-minute TD9 count top that uh, if price closes above, and it's going to try to do that here with the next five minutes. So a close above 69.92, and you're at 69.94 right now, would be a very strong bullish message from the 30-minute time frame out there. But otherwise, uh, Zim looks uh, like it's uh, getting ready to roll to the upside out there. So I do hope that helps you out. Who, uh, that was from uh, G-Man who want to take a look at Zim. So we've gone through all the requests today. That's a beautiful thing, uh, whether it was inside the Tiger Center by email. And uh, just to round things out, how are we going to do that? Let's go back and see if we can pick up the NQs. I think that's the, uh, uh, the set of uh, charts here to really focus in on. We've got it populated here. Just give me a moment here. I know we're going to be off the air in just a few seconds. What we're really looking at here inside the NQ is can it close above today? It's red oscillator and change line. That's currently printed about 11,954. We're trading at 11,992. If you can close above that, that's going to suggest a further rally to follow. Folks, thanks much for joining us on Magnificent Monday. I'll look forward to seeing you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a great afternoon.